What's up folks? I have actually been quite excited to talk about Mortal Shell. Now Mortal Shell, as I'll say a lot, is a Souls-like game. How does it shape up in every other game in the genre, which is a lot? Well, I'm going to tell you soon. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit the subscribe button and help me out? And if you would prefer an audio-only version, the link is down below. I was supplied a code from the dev, so I did not pay the asking price of $30 for this game. But with that being said, I will be doing yet again another giveaway for whatever system you choose. But do keep in mind these two things. One, if you're on PC, this is an epic exclusive. And two, I always ask the winner if they prefer physical or digital. So, whoever you are, winner, keep in mind that this game's physical release is October 2nd. It's all your choice. Now, is Mortal Shell worth $30? Well, I'm about to tell you. My name is Tanner, and this is For Your Money, a different kind of review. Mortal Shell sees you in the possession of an empty vessel, so to say. Someone who can take human shells and occupy them as if they were that person, hence the title Mortal Shell. You enter a world where humanity is sick in a twisted manner. This world is not a kind or forgiving place. Here you'll meet a figure known as the Dark Father who tasks you with traveling to the sanctums of devout followers and obtaining sacred glands. But why does he need them? Why you, the empty vessel? Mortal Shell is and isn't as simple as a lot of the Soul games play out to be. Sure, the main concepts are rather simple, but it's always about the entire image. The world, the people, etc. And just like a lot of Souls games, this one is lore heavy. But they have some interesting ways in introducing the lore to the players. The most prominent example is upgrading. Each upgrade for the shells tells about a paragraph from the shell's life. This gives you a glimpse into the lives of each character and it makes sense in how they incorporate this idea. I mean, you are, as I said, a vessel occupying a soulless body. So you have to get to know the warrior, who they are, what are they good at, which is incorporated quite well in the gameplay. Overall, yeah, this story was a hitter. I was intrigued the entire time, that being about 10 to 15 hours. I was always learning something new, and I felt motivated to keep obtaining knowledge about this game's world. It was just interesting. Gameplay is a major aspect for players when considering a game that resembles one of their favorite trilogies. How does it differ, or is it just another clone? Well, I can say, at least for me, it was a breath of fresh air. So, let's get to the basics. As I said a million times over, you control shells. Each shell is quite diverse in playstyle. This eliminates a huge aspect of the soul's formula, which is upgrading individual stats. That's not how upgrading works here. Upgrading just gives you things like the ability to kick or harden in midair, which I'll talk about soon. So one shell has tons of health and barely any stamina, where another one is vice versa, or you can have one that is in between those two right there. Now there are four shells, so there's four different playstyles to choose from. Now along with that choice of playstyle, you have four weapons that you can choose from. No, it's not a lot, but each resemble, once again, another playstyle, light or heavy. I mean, you get the point. Now to some people, this will seem like a bummer, but in my opinion, I liked it. I mean, this was a huge aspect that they were able to change and try and give this game's genre just a fresh feel, while at the same time still remaining similar to others, and honestly, it was a change that I rather enjoyed. Combat in this game is as you would expect, difficult. You have your basic light and heavy attacks that can perform deadly combos. You can dodge, block, and counter. So again, simple, yes, but they do add in two features that again change things up. First, I mentioned hardening in air. So in Mortal Shell, you can harden. It's like a stone shell around your body, and you can take hits from enemies without taking damage. And if you have the right consumable, you can gain health from it. This can also be used in the combos I mentioned. For example, a heavy attack has a three hit combo. If you know for sure you can get at least one of those hits in, but not the other two, you can harden right after that first hit, allowing the enemy to attack you. Now they're flinched, and this allows you to do your other two attacks. This was a mechanic that came in handy in almost every fight. I loved it. Number two, we all know the stress of seeing our health bars lower than our standards. So we get hit and we die. Well, this game works a bit different. So let's assume you're fresh off, haven't died on your adventure yet. Now, the first time you die, the vessel is shot out of the body and is able to get back into the shell, allowing for a second chance. Just don't get hit as the vessel because you'll die and the vessel really does not have a lot of health at all. Now, along with this is a little strategy I like to use. So yeah, here's a little tip. When I was going into a boss fight, I would die on purpose. Sounds crazy, right? 
But as long as you die in the shell the second time and not as the vessel, the shell will remain in the boss arena and when you absorb it, you regain all your health. So pretty much that's three chances you get rather than two. So again, interesting because death can be a strategy. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being Demon Souls, this game was, in my opinion, about a 5 in the difficulty field. This game's not as tough as some may like it to be. It can be if you abandon your shells and play only as the vessel, which is an option you can find, but otherwise this game isn't anything over the top. I would say it's a bit more difficult than something like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, but it's also slightly easier than Dark Souls 3. The hardest part other than the final boss fight that this game does not prepare you for is obtaining the sacred glands. Once you do so, the fog rolls in and brings some nasty creatures that gang up on you and honestly they're brutal. Again, they aren't throw your controller hard but they will prove to be a challenge especially with 4 or 5 on you at once which in the fog that's gonna happen because no space in the environment is enemy free. Pretty much you're Owen Wilson just trying to get home. Now with all that out of the way, the bugs I encountered were a bit frustrating. One at times would have my combat camera stuck as if I was locked onto an enemy, even though the enemy was already dead. To fix this, I would have to die. Another one were some infinite load screens that resulted in me having to force quit the game, not all F4, but force quit and reload. Now since I got the code, there have been updates and I didn't encounter these issues anymore, but I felt it was worth mentioning. Overall, this gameplay is fun, and it has enough, at least I think, to separate it from other Souls games and stand amongst its own. No, this won't be for everyone, I get that, but however, I truly enjoyed it from start to finish. The design of Moral Shell is just, it's impressive. The graphics caught me off guard, and I wasn't expecting anything over the top, but when I stepped into the swamp for the first time, I just looked around, kind of in awe that a team this small could make something this lush. And of course, since we have a swamp, they had to add hillbillies who love playing their banjos and drinking moonshine. Otherwise, it's not a true bayou. Of course, we have other settings like a snow castle-like area or another area that kind of reminded me of Control. They did a fine job with the environments, the enemies in the environments, the design of every creature, and the thing to bring this all together is the sound mixing. It's just, I loved it. So here's some clips of the overall design.
window of another temple. Hard work though it may be. Once you return with another sacred land, I will infuse your tarnished seal with another gift. Mortal Shell to me is worth $30 out of $30. No, this won't appeal to All Souls fans and honestly it's not even going to scratch the surface of your desire for Bloodborne 2, but it does right by making itself different enough to where those who play this hopefully enjoy and appreciate the hard work that went into this title. As usual, this was a phenomenal gaming experience, one I hope everyone can have with this title. That's all I got, folks. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? If not, then hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas.